Viewer discretion is advised. Uh, What's up, everybody? It's uh, Lamar here, your host for the Barber Block Podcast. And we are back with another episode where we talk to real barbers, real people, and we have real talk. And we're here to share our stories, to inspire, to educate, and uh, whatever else comes out that you grab value and uh, uh, take from uh, the, these episodes. So we want to thank you again for tuning in to the Barber Block Podcast. And today we have another exciting guest. Uh, we have Wealth. Help me welcome Wealth. <laughs> Buenos dias. <laughs> <laughs> my bad. I know we're running behind. My, my fat ass had to eat some pizza, man. I was hungry. <laughs> it's all good, bro. All right. So let, let, let's let's jump right into it. Let's uh, talk about the name, Wealth. You know what's crazy? I get a lot of questions about the name. I didn't give myself the name. <laughs> okay. I got to give a, like a little shout out to my boy, Mayo. Uh, he was the one who gave me the name. So like, it, like with... With the name, I got it from, like, when I was trading, like, Forex and cryptos and shit like that. You know uh -huh. what I'm saying? I got that name from that. Okay. Because the name that we were, uh, the group that we were working with, it was known as the the Wealth the wealth Club. You mm. know what I'm saying? Where it's called Wealth Club. You know what I'm saying? My boy Banks owned it. You know what I'm saying? So he yeah. owned the Wealth Club, and I was cutting everyone at the time. It was during the pandemic. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And, you know what I'm saying? No one was getting cuts. I was the only barber in the group. You know what I'm saying? So I wasn't even trading. I wasn't even trading. I was more, like. Cutting hair and shit, mm -hmm. you know. So I got the name my boy Mayo because at the time my original name was Musclehead the Barber. You know what I'm saying? My boy Mayo was like, "Yo, that shit is not fucking like, yo, that's no one's gonna want to get a fucking haircut by no motherfucking name Musclehead, Musclehead the Barber." You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so he's like, "Bro, I'm gonna give you." I'm, he's like, "Give me your phone, bro." And like, this is middle of me cutting his hair. And he was like, "Bro, look, check this out. This is what I'm gonna do." He was like, "Fuck it, you're part of the Wealth Club. You're gonna be, and you're the barber for us. You're Wealth the Barber." And that's it. That, that was that's it. it. Yeah, now I got that shit tatted on my stomach. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I got that shit. Yeah, and it's stuck. Yeah, ever since then, like, I don't know. The name Wealth is kind of just, I said, okay, cool. Fuck it. I'm going to run with it. Yeah. That's why I tell people, if you're going to give yourself a name, don't let, don't you give yourself the name. Let someone else give you the name. You know what I'm mm. saying? It's, 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 it's what, how other people view you and what exactly. they. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay, but, cool. So it's not a, it's not a, no, no vanity in that. Yeah. No, so. I, I didn't give man. Shout out to my boy, Mayo. <laughs> So let, let's uh, back it up a little bit. Where are you, um, where are you from originally? Um, I was born in Oregon, raised in East L.A., so I grew up in the hood. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? My whole life I grew up in the hood. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't around barbers. I wasn't doing nothing with barbering. I wasn't mm -hmm. cutting hair. I used to, like, my mom used to cut her hair, but, like, I used to cut my own hair, too. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I guess that's, like, how it started. You know what I mean? But I grew up in, like I said, I grew up in East L.A. I grew up in the hood, like, hood, hood. Like, I was supposed to be jumped in when I was, like, 13. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Right mm -hmm. before I turned 13, we moved out here to Arizona. And mm -hmm. I kind of just lived most of my life out here now. Mm -hmm. So what, what was that transition like, moving from East L.A. to Arizona? And what was the difference between the two cities? I mean, that shit, you it, it was crazy because, you know, one thing, it's fucked up. Because when I was raised in L.A., I wasn't allowed to kick it with black people at all. Like, there was a point in time I, I got kicked. I got caught kicking it with some of the black kids from school, and I got my eyes jumped because of that shit. Oh, wow. Yeah, I, like, yeah. we weren't allowed to hang around black people whatsoever. You know mm. what I'm saying? I come out here, and uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, it was just so different. Like, the politics are way different out here. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Even, like, with everything in total, like, it, California, Arizona is completely fucking different. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, with the one, like, the whole lifestyle is fucking different. different. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? You go to Cali, like, it's every 10 seconds. Hey, what's up, homie? Where you from? You know what I'm saying? Or it's mm -hmm. just... It's a lot of shit, but I mean, when I, the transition between moving, I was just like, it was cool, but obviously it's hot as fuck here. I moved during the summer. I moved here during the summer. I was fucking dying. I was like, yo, I ain't used to this shit. I'm fucking sweating. Nah, hell no. Nah. So, I mean, the transition was just weird, like just yeah. moving, you know what I'm saying? I wasn't yeah. used to it. I wasn't used to the super hot. Right. You know, and then we didn't have nobody out here. We didn't have no family besides uh -huh. my grandma, but at the time I didn't really know my grandma like that. You know what I uh -huh. mean? Uh -huh. But well, Why? What was the reason why you all moved out of here? Moved out uh, to Arizona. We moved. We moved to. We moved from Cali to A or to AZ because my stepdad at the time he had a job out here and he was like he said he was doing good. Little to find out, like he like that dude fucked my life up, bro. Like mm. when I mean like he fucked my life up, like bro, like mentally fucked me up in the head. Like I seen some shit that like some people would be like, damn, like you seen that? You know, mm. like the shit that he exposed me to. My therapists were like, yo, you need some help. Like, what the, that's what the fuck I'm here for. What the fuck you mean? I need some help. 
But it's it, it was just one of those things, man, where like he was like, Yeah, yeah, it's all good. Like you like you guys come out here, I'm gonna take care of you guys came out here. Like, bro, I lived in an abandoned fucking trailer. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? I, I lived with no food, no lights, no water, no nothing. You know, I, like, I, my mom's going to hate this shit, but, like, my mom was a big drug addict. Like, big drug addict. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Till recently, she's getting clean. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, I, and I'm happy my mom's getting clean now. You know what I mean? It yeah. means a lot, you know? But it's still, like, a lot of this shit of her doing drugs her whole life, you know what yeah. I'm saying, kind of fucked me up. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because that led me down the path of doing drugs. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And yeah. a lot of you... And, with uh, with with that, bro, it, like I said, I had a fucked up childhood. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Transition. I think Arizona kind of fucked me up. Either way, I was going to have a fucked up childhood, bro. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? If I stood in L.A., I would have been used to the gang violence. Like, every fucking, every year on average, bro, I bury like 12 people. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I just mm-hmm. had to bury both my cousins last year. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And like I tell people, like, it's a lot. You know what I'm saying? But At a young age. At a young age. Yeah. A young age. At the time, I was 12. Yeah. You know, so I'm experiencing death. I was selling crack, looking at people smoking crack, smoking meth in the household that I grew up in. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? My brother, he was a dope kid. You know what I'm saying? My brother, my mom did drugs with, with my with my brother who was born after me. You know what I'm saying? She told me, she's like, I was high on crack when I gave birth to your brother. And mm-hmm. that's why my brother's dead now. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And so I seen a lot of fucked up shit. A lot of fucked up shit has happened to me. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And... um. And overall, I still made a path to make it. You know what I'm saying? So I came from the gangbang. I came from the drug dealing. You know what I'm saying? I came from the darkest depths of the world. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Seeing some shit. You know, mm-hmm. I, at the time, I when we moved to Arizona, I had to raise my brothers and sisters, bro. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? My mom, like, she was, like, my mom was too high on fucking drugs to take care of us. And then when my mom would get too high on the drugs that my stepdad was selling, my dad, my stepdad would beat her ass. And if I would try to defend her... My stepdad would beat my ass. You know what mm. I'm saying? So like, I'm talking about like a full 30, 40 year old man whooping a little 12 year old's ass, bro. Mm. And I'm still taking that shit day after day after day. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I was getting my ass whooped every day because I was like, I didn't want this shit. And that right there, bro, made me to where like I wanted a family. You know what I'm saying? When mm. I got older, I've always knew I've always wanted a family. You know what I'm saying? Because I've always wanted to give my kids something like I like. I never had. Mm. I never got to have a childhood. Now, like, I'm able to go, fuck it, what we doing this weekend? Fuck it, let's just go to San Diego and go to SeaWorld. You know mm. what I'm saying? Mm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, I mean, like, yeah, my bad. I just went, like, off, <laughs> off topic and shit. But you're good. That's, you're good, that's what the transition was like for me, bro. Right. Like, it was fucked up. You know, everything, yeah. like, everyone, like, my childhood was fucked. Mm. I see so what, what, what was your outlet? Like, if you're going through all of that, um, you know, your mom on drugs, Pops is doing what he do, you know, you got to take care of your, your siblings. And what what was your outlet? How did you escape? You know, you know it was crazy. Um, it was kind of mute. I, I did, like, I was writing, like, music. I used to, like, journal shit. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? I've always been good. Like, I was writing music, just joking around. I was always a jokester. Mm-hmm. That's one thing I noticed. I was always funny. I was really comedian. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, every room I go to, I can make people laugh. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And I've always been good at that. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, I used to always try to make people laugh when I felt, when I, like, when mm-hmm. I was going through some fucked up shit. But I'm always trying to make it relatable. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And I don't know, bro. Like I said, I went through a lot, bro. Like yeah. a lot. You so know you, you, your 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 escape was to make people laugh, to to be yeah. the comedian in the room. Yeah, so it, that I've always tried to, to do to like cover fun up. shit, like fuck yeah. it, you know. Let's go do this. Let's go do that. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Who really cares? Right. Yeah. So what, at what point did you, um, you know, take on barbering, or what? How did you? So, that so later on down the road, you know what I'm saying? I, I eventually got in trouble for like a lot of things. You know what I'm saying? I was like getting, I was getting known for like in the neighborhood for doing home invasions. Like we didn't have enough food. So I, I would go and steal from the neighbors. I used to go mm. steal food from the neighbors, go feed my brother and sister. My sister, my baby sister at the time was six months. So I used to go steal formula and all that. So I was just like a quote unquote bad kid, but my situation that I was put in made me act made out. You do that. You know, I had to do what I had to do. You know, to I was survive, homeless. Yeah. I was sleeping. Like we, I used to shower in the canals. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like that's why, like a lot of people, are like, oh, it's such a hard time. That's why, like, I hate, like, a, I hate a lot of things, bro. Because I'm like, bro, people be like, oh, I have it so rough. I'm like, yo, bro, you woke up today, dog. Like, what you complaining about? But right. I mean, my bad. What were your questions again? <laughs> my bad. I got fucking distracted. My bad. You're good. So, so at what point, you know? So you went through that. You you basically just doing whatever you can to yeah. survive. Um, what was there a turning point for you that led you in the direction of? Barbering. What what was that? It was funny, bro, because I was never supposed to be a barber. Um, uh, before I went to Kane State, because that's where I got my barber's license, right? I was I was DJing at school. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I was DJing at school. I was doing music there. I was supposed to be performing and shit, and I got in trouble. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And I got into some shit, you know, and I got sent to Kane State. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. When I got sent to Kane State for the first time, because I went there, I think initially three times. You know, in eight in, in total, I went in there for three years in total. Mm. You know, so um, when I went to Kane and, State, and just explain what Kane State is. I Kane know what State, it is, okay, okay. So Kane State's viewers. like imagine you put boot camp, imagine a boot camp, and Juvie had a baby, and that's what the <laughs> fuck it was. And it's like, dude, imagine waking up at four in the morning having to eat. <laughs> Imagine like waking up at four in the morning, having to eat, and then having to fucking run the three mile and throw all this shit up. You know what I'm saying? And then having to go work out after that. Then you have school. Then you have to go to your vocation. And it was just like so much. Like it was crazy, bro. Like kids in there were really like um, getting grape. You know what I'm saying? I can't say the other word because you're, 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 they'll, they'll, they'll uh, cancel the, the episode. But kids were in there getting grape. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And I was in there. I witnessed this shit. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Kids in there were getting stabbed. I was watching night staff get stabbed. Mm-hmm. I was watching kids like you know what I'm saying. I was moving some of the dope and through the fucking uh, throughout the 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 the, the, the units too. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I seen it all. You know what I'm saying? In there, there was more. Let me tell you what, bro. There's probably more drugs in jail than there is out Outside. here. You know what wow. I'm saying? It's a lot easier to get drugs in jail. Like it's fucking easy, bro. Mm-hmm. But basically, I was there for Kane State and told I did like three years. I was doing. I was working on the farm. I was doing this. I mean, I took advantage, bro. See, me, I'm smart. I think about business. So I got my certification, OSHA, I have first aid, general industry, uh, forklift training. I have CPR, AED, uh, food handlers, which is like everyone pretty much has that. But I also got uh, physical. I had. Uh, I was working with kids with horses, doing therapy with, with horses and kids that were mm-hmm. physically, mentally handicapped in any sort of way. So I was working with them. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I also did uh, my barber's license, and I was working with a whole bunch of other things. You know what I'm saying? I, I was... Overall, I was probably one of the smartest kids there. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Uh, I got a call from the, the director of Kane State, you know what I'm saying, Mr. Heath. I think he's the director or something like that. He called me. He said, you're the 1%. You know what I'm saying? Like, cause mm-hmm. it, it's only a 1% success rate when you come out of Kane State. Wow. Like, majority of the kids who I, who I came out with are, are like, now dead. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I have them all. I have them all on my phone. Like, which kids? I think they told us like a hundred and something kids I was in there with. I mm-hmm. knew. I knew their names. I knew their family. I knew where they're from. What state? We shared beds. I'm talking about people we I used to share beds with. You know what I'm saying? Now I knew. I knew them. We we're close. We we're homies. We we're brothers. And now they're dead. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And uh, it, I mean, I mean, that's how my my route was barbering started, man. I started barbering there, and I just, I never intended to actually be a barber. It. Yeah, I was like, man, I'm just gonna do this yeah. shit because it's. It's fucking, I can get away from the rest of the units. You know what I'm saying? I cut uh, hair and I didn't take it serious at first. Yeah. I was so 15 when I started. What, what was your, was it easy to get all those certifications for you and then, you know, uh, being in there? And then what was sort of your your attitude? Were you still just a knucklehead at that point, even though um, you were achieving all these certificates? It was it was easy for me because I had no other option. You know what I'm mm. saying? What was my other option was to be a failure. Failure is not an option. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I, like, I, like I tell everyone, man, it's cool to fail. It's not cool to be a failure. You know what I'm saying? Failing is not failing. Failing is really learning. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah. The more times you fail, the more times you learn. You're like, learning. oh, fuck. Well, if, oh, okay. Well, maybe I shouldn't fucking pet that dog because that motherfucker bit me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> now you're not going to pet that fucking dog no more, right? right? Like, damn. I fucked that chick. Now I got now I got, now I got, burned. I got clapped now. Okay. Well, maybe I shouldn't fuck her again. You know what I'm saying? Maybe I, sh- maybe I should put a condom on her. You know what I'm saying? I, I still don't wear condoms, but I'm just, I'm just saying. You should probably wear a condom. I don't wear condoms, but you should probably wear a condom. It's not barber related, but you should wear a condom. The same way you wear gloves. I, I don't. I don't. That's why I got hair splinters. Um, <laughs> but I mean, that, that's that's really it. You know what I'm saying? My, uh, there's no other route for me. If it's fair, you know what I'm saying? Being a failure was not a fucking option. Me right. losing, me losing, that's not a fucking option. I can right. never lose. I can't. You tell me I came from all. Like, you're going to tell me I came this far just to come this far? Right. Are oh, you tripping? You were already at the bottom. That's why you know what's crazy yeah. is I'll tell when I went from selling dope allegedly to selling haircuts. You know what I'm saying? I'm still I'm dope. I'm a dope ass barber. There's yeah. one barber man who um who's like probably like the biggest inspiration for me, man. And uh, I'm a, I'm a recommend to bring come on to the show. But he told me he was like, bro, I, I like at the time I was like I had like such doubt in me and my barbering. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? I thought my cuts wasn't there. You know, everyone said I was dope. Even though everyone's like, bro, you're one of the dopest barbers in the city. Mm-hmm. I wasn't getting no clients. He was like, bro, remember this. Just like the dope game, dope sells itself. And you have to remember, you're dope as fuck. Mm. Yeah. You know what I mean? I was yeah. like, damn, I am pretty dope. Like, I ain't gonna lie. I'm nice as fuck with the Clippers. I ain't no one really see me. Ain't no one fucking with me with the Clippers. You know what I'm saying? Right. And the, right. You know, I mean, that's I mean, that's that. You know what I'm saying? Failure yeah. wasn't an option to go out throughout all this. Now, at the time, I was kind of knucklehead. Because, yeah. like, when you tell a kid, hey, like, you know what I'm saying? When you're raising kids, you're like, hey, don't touch the stove. The stove's fucking hot. 
They dumbasses are going to touch the stove anyways. Like, oh, let me see how hard it really is. <laughs> touch the stove. Oh, shit. Next thing you know, they're hampered. I was the kid who touched the stove and fucking held their hand there. And was like, damn, this shit is kind of hot. I was one of those kids. I didn't fucking learn. I had to, I had to learn it myself. Like Nipsey said, the best, ex- the best teacher in life is your own experience. Mm-hmm. You know, I had to experience the shit for myself. Everyone was like, bro, don't do that. It's not going to work. Mm-hmm. Watch. Yeah. Oh, fuck, it didn't work. Watch me do it again, though. Watch me somehow magically make this shit work. And I always made it work. Yeah. Bro, I was doing all this at school and all this. I ended up dropping out of school. I think school's a fucking... If you're in high school and you're watching this, bro, and you think about Barbara, just get your 11 credits or whatever the fuck you need and drop out of high school, man. High school's the biggest fucking waste of time. I think college is a waste of time. I think all that shit's a waste of fucking time. That's why I tattooed my face, too, man. I I mean, there's... Yeah, there's a lot to go into that. (laughs) (laughs) But I think school's a waste of fucking time. It's a waste of time. You know what I mean? But, uh, yeah, man, barbering was never supposed to be a thing for me. So, okay, coming out of Canyon State, what, what was your path? Did you go right into barbering or yeah. what, did you do something else? I or? went straight into barbering. I was like, shit, I know I can make some money. Because cool. I'm a hustler. I was like, cool, I think I can make some money. I was like, maybe if I get into a shop, cool in the shop, maybe I can start slinging dough. Because I, I was in a barbershop. Mike's barbershop was the first barbershop I ever went to. A super white barbershop. I was fucking, I was either 15, I was 16. I was 16 at the time. I started barbering at 15. I was 16 at the time when I was when I went into my first barbershop. In totals, I've been in 13 barbershops. So I was 16 at the time when I got into my first barbershop. I was licensed and all that, right? It was cool. It was very, but no one wanted to get a haircut from me because how fucking young I was. Mm. I worked in the older barbershops because none but old heads walking in. I'm talking about like old white dudes. You know what I'm saying? You see a young Hispanic Mexican kid, they don't want to fucking cut. Let's just keep it real. You know what I'm saying? Mm. They didn't want a haircut for me. You know what I'm saying? They're like, yo, you don't even know how to like, yeah, I was the shittiest person in the shop. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I've only been cutting for a few months, maybe a few, maybe a year. Mm. You know? Yeah. But I would never thought that same kid at 16 working in a shitty ass barbershop you know what I'm saying? Would be this guy who's 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 doing celebrity haircuts now, cutting millionaires, making uh, almost hundreds of thousand dollars off of fucking the haircuts. You know what I'm saying? Right. If you want to come get a haircut from me, I need a minimum of a hundred dollars, damn near. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. If you want me to go to your house, I need two to three hundred dollars. Right. You know what I'm saying? My hour, that's my rate. You know what I'm saying? If you right. want me to turn my clippers on, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, I need a lineup. It's seventy fucking dollars, bro. I need I need my money. Fuck you. I need my money. Right. right. You know. So. Uh, uh, after the first shop, uh, you, what made you leave? I mean, was it because uh, I, I I'm familiar with that shop you're talking about, mm-hmm. and it is it's a big retirement community over yeah. there. So, uh, what what made you get out of that shop? There or, was a, where did you go? I was working at the time. I called him Unc. You know what I'm saying? He sings. Uh, his name's Rodney. He sings with Black Street now. He does, I don't think he cuts hair, but he sings with Black Street. Mm-hmm. He's like, Yo, I'm opening up a shop, man. Come work with me. I said, Cool. Boom. I did. I posted it the same day. Mike seen it. He was like, Yo, what the fuck are you talking about? You're just leaving. I was like, Yeah, I'm out, dog. Cool. Later. Yeah. I didn't end up making a lot of money with Rodney. You know what I'm saying? But he showed me how to cut black people hair. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know how to cut no coarse hair. I didn't know do none of that shit. I right. sucked. I went with him for three months. Yeah. I came out and I was fucking crispy. I was crispy now. I was like, okay, now I get it. This is why you go down with the, this is why you go down with the grain here. This is why you do this here. You know what I'm saying? This is why you, you know what I'm saying? You have to be careful at the back of the neck. You don't want them breaking out. Be careful under, you know what I'm saying? Like little shit like that, you know? Right. And uh, I ended up leaving him too. And I went to another shop and another shop and another shop. And each shop was a, a, such a valuable lesson. I'm like, damn, like, fuck this owner. Man, this, this shop's crazy slow. And every time I realized, I'm like, damn, why is his shop slow? I was like, damn, you know what? The owner, he jumping with clients, but I'm slow. Why is that? I ain't got no clientele. Mm. So, I mean, for, I mean, it, it's like, that's why I tell barbers. I'm like, bro, if you're slow, it's no one else's fault but yours. Everything in life, it's no one else's fault but sure. yours. You know what I'm saying? If you're not where you want to be somewhere in life, it's no one else's fault but yours, bro. If you're not where you want to be, if you don't make a million dollars, it's your fucking fault. Mm. You know what I'm saying? If you don't have, if you if you hate your fucking wife, that's your fault. You picked the bitch. You hate your kids, that's your fucking fault. You fucking raised them. You should have raised them better. You know right, what I'm saying? Right. Do you hate the way you cut hair? Maybe you should fucking take a class. Maybe you should fucking learn from somebody. Right. Do so. There's always a better outcome. Like chess, bro. Like there's always the best move on the board. You have to figure out what that best move is. Right. And the best move for you. Yeah, the best yeah. move for you. I mean, yeah. shit. I mean, yeah. There's, I mean, there's not much you can say about yeah. that. It's just, yo, figure it the fuck out or be left behind. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Only the strong survive. You yeah. know what I mean? It's either you're going to grow or you're going to be fucking left behind. You're going to be fucking eaten. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. So in your, 
moving from shop to shop and you're learning these valuable lessons, at what point did you realize, you know, like, okay, I need to, you know, I need to plant somewhere and just, just, just ride it out and, and build. At I what didn't. point was that? That's just crazy. Not. I didn't, I was always okay. jumping from shop to shop. I'll probably spend a few months here, a few months there, a few months there. And then I just eventually start seeing, I'm like, yo, like people are actually like gravitating towards me. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And that's when, um. The last barber shop I've ever worked in was with Kool Aid. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And uh, we had our differences. That's my dog. You know what I'm saying? Like that's that's my fucking brother. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And um, I think I was ready. I was looking. I was like, man, it's time. I need to go out on my own. You know what I'm saying? I'm a big boy now. You know what I'm saying? I got the clientele. I'm dope as fuck with the Clippers. I think it's time to be on my own. Mm-hmm. So I moved into my studio, and this is the studio that I'm at now. Like I have my own private studio. Mm-hmm. I've been there for almost two years now, and it's crazy the things I've been able to to accomplish. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, like, I, like I tell everyone, like, bro, the 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 little kid from East LA, you know what I'm saying? Who grew up this way and all that shit. I never thought I would be this motherfucker that I am today. You know what I'm saying? Now that like I have beef with rappers, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> bro didn't want to pay for his haircut. I'm not gonna say no names, but bro didn't want to pay for his haircut. <laughs> It's all over no jumper. It's all over academics. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to say his name, but it's cool when they do it. It's a problem when I do it. <laughs> but, I mean, it, I never thought I would get to this position yeah. in my life. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, how many people can say they cut millionaires? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Real life millionaires. Right. How many times you've been flown out for a haircut, bro? Yeah. To go do a haircut. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. How many people have flown to you from a whole other side of the U.S., bro, to come get a haircut? haircut. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I accomplished all this at 22 years old by my fucking self. Yeah, I've had people along the way teach me. I've always had mentors. I've had people show me the path, uh, show me the path, show me the route. But no one's ever really, you know what I'm saying? No one held my hand. I didn't get a, you know what I'm saying, a handout. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I didn't have no one over there wiping my ass. You know what I'm saying? I did this shit on my own, bro. Yeah. I struggled on my own. I did all this by myself. Mm-hmm. So what what was the some of the struggles that you went through getting to where you are now, uh, you know, uh, just growing your clientele and getting those people to stick. How long did that take? And, uh, you know, what were the struggles and challenges Shit. that you went um, through? I always tell people it, it took as long as I cut hair. You know what I'm saying? So I guess I could say you could say it took like six, seven years. Mm-hmm. And my girl's been with me the whole time. Yeah. 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 As soon as I got out, we've been together almost going on seven years now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Off and on, but I mean, shit. shit. And how old are you now? I'm 22. 22. You're 22, 22 now. Yeah. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So I'm still young. Yeah. I'm you're, still you're super way, young. You're way young. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I saw him telling him, was like, I accomplished all this before people can even fathom the idea. Like, I did not know you were 22. I, all this time, I'm thinking you're like in your 30s. Nah. No, nah, I just, <laughs> that's crazy because even with the tattoos, oh, I appreciate it, bro. Even with the tattoos, people would look at me, they're like, bro, like, you got to be your 30s, 40s. I'm like, nah, dog. Like, I'm, just able to go to the clubs, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Even now, like I don't go to the clubs. That shit's a waste of time. Like I used yeah. to, I go, I've been to the clubs, drop thousands of dollars, drop like yeah. ten racks. You know what I'm saying? Done the bottle services and threw money. I don't been to the strip clubs. You know what I'm saying? I got some videos, man. <laughs> I man, I, I got bet. some videos, man. Now she knows, she knows, she know. I got some videos, man. Should delete most of them. I'm still mad as fuck. I ain't gonna lie. I'm still mad. <laughs> But, you know, I've done it all, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I hung, I partied with celebrities. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I was just in the club with Blueface, and Blueface recognized me. He's like, yo, bro, I've seen you on TikTok. He's like, I fuck with you, bro. He was like, you crazy as fuck with the tattoos, <laughs> but I fuck with you, bro. And, I, you know, that's what's crazy. When I was sat there, I'm like, bro doesn't even know I fucking cut hair. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's why, like, that's why now, like, I'm kind of taking a path to kind of steer away from Barbie. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Because I tell a lot of people... I feel like there's a cap, you know what I'm saying? Like there's a there's a cap on what you can do, how big of a barber you could be. You know what I'm saying? Or, or like the I just feel like your name, it kind of stops at like the barber. You know what I'm saying? I don't mm. want people to know me as wealth the barber. You know what I'm saying? Cause I'm not, I'm not a barber. You know what I'm saying? I'm a fucking human. I'm that guy. You know what I'm saying? I'm him. I'm Himothy. I'm him. You know what I'm saying? I'm him. Like nobody, I'm Hemi Neutron. Like nobody can take that away from me. The amount of confidence I have, that's the problem yeah. too. I'm also a coach, man. I teach guys how to separate the confidence. I'm like, you know what I'm saying? I teach guys how to get girls. I teach guys how to eat, get fucking laid. I'll show you, bro. I have lists of guys who I literally mentor and I coach and teach them how to get pussy. And what to do in the bedroom. Like, look, bro, when you get in, you got to be nice, smooth, control. You know what I'm saying? You lit that candle. You want to make sure, you know what I'm saying, your feet smell good, your nails cut right. You know what I'm saying? Like, eat the littlest things, bro. I teach that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So now I'm going to start taking the avenue of that. And now I'm making music as well. And I, like I said, it, I never thought I would fucking be this. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. So barbering has just kind of been a springboard to get you yeah, to the you, next I level. Mean, and, you, and you're still only... 
22. That, yeah. That's that's what blows my mind because I didn't know you were that young when we first met, you know. And, and, oh, and, man. And, I think and that's been we years first, ago. It seems first like it's initially been years met, ago. When we first initially met, I think I was probably 18 or so. Yeah. I was probably like 18, 19, yeah. something like that. I yeah. was working at Royal Fades yeah. down the street here, from here yeah. not too long ago, man. Yeah. So let's 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 talk about the tats, you know, because uh. I've been watching the journey, and you know, you started off with one, and then next thing, you know, you're you're fully covered. Uh, um, what 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 inspired that? And you know, it's crazy with the tattoos. I never intended to be this tatted. <laughs> I never thought I'd be this fucking tatted. I never. I was like, yeah, I would never get. I would like face tattoos. That's fucking stupid. Anyone who has a face tattoo, they're fucking stupid. I'm fucking stupid. I'm fucking stupid. <laughs> I'm fucking stupid. <laughs> But what started um, what started with the tattoos is, is I've always looked around and noticed people live a life they don't want to live. Mm. You know what I mean? And I noticed they live a life that they don't want to live because they're stuck in the rat race. They're stuck in this. In the book, Thinking Grow Rich, Napoleon Hill talks about burning the bridge between the entrepreneur life and the nine to five life. Which one way to burn that? Mm. Bro, I don't have a high school diploma. I don't have a GED. I'm covered with tattoos. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And and I have, you know what I'm saying, some other past history shit, you know what I'm saying? So technically, bro, I'm not supposed to make it. Right. You know what I'm saying? I'm the statistic on on who's not supposed to make it. The, the 1%. Yeah. yeah. Have a good? Oh, you guys scared me. You good? Oh, okay. Shit, I'm over here like, I'm over here reaching and shit, man. God damn. <laughs> See? Make me nervous, babe. Um. But I mean, with the tattoos, bro, it's all it all came from you know what I'm saying. Just me, just I've always wanted to find the way to burn that bridge, and you know what I'm saying. Getting the tattoos was was one way to burn that bridge. I never wanted to fuck with corporate America unless it was from a business standpoint. You know what I'm saying? Pacino's did it smart. You know what I'm saying? Before Pacino's put all his product in Target, he didn't have tattoos. Now that after he put his products in Target, bro got his fucking neck blasted. Mm, yeah. And yeah. who's gonna tell him no? Right. He's already working. You guys already got the contract signed. Right. And I never wanted to be the one who'd be like, oh, man, I, I, you know, I never, I made it hard on myself. Mm. You know what I'm saying? On purpose. You know what I'm saying? Because I work hard on everyone, bro. The tattoos, bro, everywhere I go, I get judged at. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? I was over here getting pizza. You know, I had, like, there, there's three sheriffs in there. They're fucking dogging me down. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I made it hard, but, you know, I accept the fact that it's hard, but no, but they don't know how educated. They don't know I know the law like the, they, they like how I know it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I know my rights. I know I'm able to carry. You know what I'm saying? I know this. I know that. You know what I'm saying? I took my time and I studied and everything. Everything. My whole team's like that. You know what I'm saying? Nothing but fucking bosses, animals. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That was my whole intention with the tattoos. I didn't think I was gonna get like this, but it's like fuck <laughs> it, why not? I mean, who's gonna tell me I can't? You know what I'm saying? Um, my boy, he's a he's a tattoo. Re- you, ever, you ever heard of the tattoo realtor? Bro's more blasted than me with tattoos. And he's yeah. a fucking realtor. Bro sells houses, yeah. millions. He has he makes millions, bro. And he's covered with fucking tattoos. Yeah. And you're telling me and he doesn't dress all professional. He's not in a suit and tie. No, bro. Where he's fucking yeah. ripped jeans and a, and a button up t shirt. Mm-hmm. And he's making millions, bro. And he's fucking making it. He's making a whole new path. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And I intend to do the same thing with barbering, bro. I don't see a lot of barbers, you know what I'm saying, blasted with tattoos and still successful, still meeting businessmen. I cut Fortune 500 company owners. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I cut, cut guys who are CEOs. You know what I'm saying? I cut the CFOs. I do that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, what do you think it is that, that they, how did, what is it about you that they gravitate towards? Is it just because you're different? Stand I'm different. Out, I'm, diff- it, I'm or... definitely different. I'm definitely stand out. So the thing I always told barbers is, why should I come get a haircut from you? What's different? Mm. What's different from you? My thing is, it's like you ever heard the the concept of how Jordan Belford sold? He was like, sell me this pen. You know what I'm saying? Mm. It's real easy. You know what I'm saying? Imagine like, sell me this water bottle. Well, every time you take a sip from this water, right, your dick gets bigger. <laughs> I'm fucking sold. <laughs> I want a bigger dick. Every guy wants a bigger dick, right? <laughs> Every time you get a haircut from me, you get more bitches, you get a higher income, and then, you know what I'm saying, everyone is going to look at you like, wow, who did that fucking haircut? Yeah. I'm the water bottle. Gotcha. And then you have to come back, well, damn, you got a water bottle, but now you're hungry. Cool. I'm going to come over here with a slice of pizza, and every time you get the slice of pizza, it's going to make your balls bigger. Oh, your balls and your dick are way too big. You can't handle it? Boom. I got a new product for you. That's the market is selling, man. So I study marketing as well, man. No one knows I'm a marketing fucking genius. Yeah. You know, I take classes. I spend classes. Right now, I'm looking into, uh, it's called Toastmasters, man. I, I I advise a lot of barbers to take it. Toastmasters is a 
it, it's a class. It's a group. They all mm-hmm. get together. You, I think it's like $45 every three months or every month or something like that. You can spend mm-hmm. $45 and they teach you how to articulate yourself, how to hold yourself, how to move your hands, which way to move your hands, right. how to talk, how to walk, how to do this. And if they don't teach you, I'm going to teach you. I'm going to tax you. You know what I'm saying? Even with barbers, bro, you want to come watch me and how I obtain my clients and why my clients never leave and they always fucking stay and they always come back. My clients will cheat on their girl before they cheat on me. My clients will tell their girl to fuck off before they tell me to fuck off. I had a client I had a client who lived in Crink Creek, and I and I work in Tempe. He would drive all the way to Crink Creek to Tempe, and his girl's like, why don't you just find a barber closer? He's like, bro, I had to dump her right there and there. She doesn't understand. She doesn't understand. She doesn't understand. <laughs> I said, bro, I mean, it, I mean, you didn't have to go that route. You know, so that's fucking extreme, but that's reality. You know right. what I'm saying? So... I've always been the best of the best, and I've always put myself in. The reason why, because I worked hard. I worked all these years at a young age. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's why, you know what I'm saying? I even, like, in my podcast, you know what I'm saying? I even talk about, like, as a man gets older, the more valuable he becomes. Mm-hmm. And it's just facts. Mm-hmm. This episode is brought to you by Leonetti's Barber Supply. We've been in the barber supply business since 1968, helping barbers deliver their best haircuts. We're located at 1633. East McDowell Road, Phoenix, Arizona, 85006. We've got everything you need. We've got your clippers. We've got your trimmers. We've got your disinfectants. Everything you need to help you deliver your best haircut. Now, let's get back to this episode. Telling me that the, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'll use this analogy is, what does a hot young girl have to do to get onto a yacht? She just has to show up pretty much. Show the tits out. Boom, she's good. Right. What does the old, what does the guy have to do to get onto the yacht? He has to have the money. Right. And it's a lot of money to get a yacht. Even and provide to a the yacht. yacht. Yeah. And to provide the yacht, provide the bottles, provide right. the services. You know what I'm saying? So the guy had to work. So women are born with their value as a man had to make their value. Right. Yeah. So men live in the GTA life. And that's what I'm saying. Right now we live in GTA. And I get mad at a lot of the younger guys who are in the barber industry who are like young barbers. I'm like, bro, look, stack your bread and reinvest your bread into better clippers. You know what I'm saying? Better this, better that. Mm-hmm. Bro, you don't need to go out, bro. It's cool to go out, have go to the bar. Like, I don't did it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I don't spend money, a shit ton of money on cocaine and hookers. For real. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't want that fucking path. It's not worth it. It's cool. It's fun. It's, you get the, some cool the, stories. The thing that I, the, the crazy stuff is that you're still 22. <laughs> so you've been through all of this stuff and you learn real fast. Like, okay, yeah. I, I need to stop doing this. The stove's hot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Long story short, the stove's hot. It's cool. It's worth it. You know what I'm saying? I've had the parties. I've done all the drugs. Here. I've overdosed like countless times already. Uh, it's fun. Don't get me wrong. It's it's exciting. You know, oh, titties. You know, it's, it's cool, bro. But... What's even better is be like, yo, what, I didn't fuck around with my time. You know what I'm saying? That's mm-hmm. what I'm like. I'm not here to fucking play around. That's what like, I I'll, like. There's a client who I wake up at 5 in the morning and I go cut his hair at 6 a.m. Mm-hmm. Every week or sometimes twice a week. Mm-hmm. And he pays me $200 to go do it. Mm-hmm. Sometimes $400. Sometimes $450. Sometimes $700. Mm-hmm. Just to wake up early. Just to go cut his hair in the morning before his meetings. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I saw I told him, what are you willing to sacrifice? What are you willing to sacrifice today to be a better person tomorrow? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And you have to live. You know what I'm saying? I like how in Rocky, he's like, you know what I'm saying? He's like, fuck it. We'll just do it tomorrow. There is no fucking tomorrow. tomorrow. You're wasting your time today thinking about the plans you can make tomorrow. Bro, we don't even know if I'll be able to leave this room. You don't know if some psychomaniac might come here and fucking spray us and shoot us all. You know what I'm saying? Mm. We don't know, bro. You have to be grateful for the times that you had. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and learn from the lessons, man. A wise man learns. A smart man learns from his mistakes, but a wise man learns from others' mistakes. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Whenever I, I've always I've always said when when I get to meet to Jay Z, when I get to meet Jay Z, because I'm going to meet him. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to ask him what he did right because we can see that we see his success. I'm asking what you do wrong, what didn't you like in your career, what thing you what were some things you could have changed. You know what I'm saying? What would you done better? Right. You know what I'm saying? I know you're a fucking. I know you're an amazing artist. Everyone knows it. Right. I'm like the what the best you that you can become. Work on becoming that person. Right. You know what I'm saying? Imagine you die tomorrow and you sitting there Judgment Day and God's looking at you like, damn, bro. You fumbled the bag. You <laughs> fucked up. You know what I'm saying? You don't get to start over. Like, this is it, bro. You, this is it. you get to live with that. Right. Whatever you do in life, it goes into eternity. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Nipsey's, Nipsey's life is always going to be remembered. Yeah. Everyone's going to remember Nip's name. Everyone's going to remember Pac's name. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 
Everyone's going to remember them. Why? Because the things that they did that while they were still fucking here, yeah. they weren't wasting time. They were getting fucking to it. But you want to waste time. You want to go out and fuck hoes. And it's cool. Yeah, I, I tell you guys, go out and get, get, get some pussy. You know what I'm saying? Get it out your system. You know what I'm saying? Get it out your system. Go get some pussy. Get, you know what I'm saying? Because once that's your system, you feel good. You're like, all right, cool. That was all right. Moving Whatever. on. On, on to next. the next thing, right? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So get it out your system now. You know what I'm saying? I, I, like I told you guys, it's cool to have fun, but fuck that, man. I'd rather bust my ass off in my 20s. That way, in my 30s and my 40s, I can go buy the Bugattis. I can go fucking go chill on the yachts. I can go fucking retire my girl. You know what I'm saying? The next two years, my girls will be retired. She, like, she'll be retired by the time we're 24, 25. Wow. Who the fuck gets to retire at that fucking age? Not very many people. You know what I'm saying? My dad, he didn't get to retire. Till he, my dad, he just retired, and he's 46. Mm. I told my dad, by the time I'm 30, I'm going to be worth $100 million. Mm. You know, I told him, but it's not, I'm not going to make $100 million from Clippers. The beginning started there. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's what started me. You know what I'm saying? There's, yeah. there's, there's more to this life than what you've been shown. Right. You know what I'm saying? We just, we just, we just see here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Another thing too is I tell people, learn how to let go of the past. If Imagine if I held on the fact that I didn't have a dad. My mom was on drugs. My stepdad used to abuse me. All my stepdad used to abuse me. I used to be hungry. I used to eat out of trash cans. I, I, I showered in canals. You know what I'm saying? I've seen all this shit. Imagine mm -hmm. if I held on to that and I was so focused on the past, I never got to see the present or the future. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Today is a gift. Today is a gift. That's why it's called the present. Mm. The present. You know what I'm saying? And this is this is a gift, bro. Yeah. You're you were lucky enough to wake up, dog. The matter of fact that you're even brought into existence, I think is like one in in, in like three trillion in, in, in possibilities. So imagine, you know what I'm saying? You're here, you're here sitting wasting your fucking time while someone else could have been alive and could have been making shit happen. But you want to sit around, you want to fucking make excuses because you fucking had a bad day at work. We all fucking have bad days. We all fuck up on haircuts. Right. Get the fuck over it. It's not a big deal. <laughs> fuck it. Bro, I fuck up on haircuts to this day. I'm like, damn. I'm looking at my comments. I'm like, damn, I accidentally pushed this nigga back. I didn't even do that. Fuck. <laughs> fuck it. I'm at the discount. I'm like, no, bro, it's all good. You ain't got to worry about today. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, it's it's make your life matter, bro. Whether yeah. you're a barber, stylist, whatever the fuck you want to be called, whatever the fuck, make your time matter. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's all you have to do. But don't make excuses on why you can't do things. Yeah. Oh, it's my my shop's slow. Cool. Well, you go you go out and you go do the fucking foot traffic. Right. I sat there and I went to the malls. I shook hands. You know how many times I went to fucking companies and I fucking I went to corporate companies and I was never even invited to before the tattoos. You know what I'm saying? I went to companies I wasn't even invited to and I shook their hands. I'm like, look, I went to the Lexus dealerships. I'm like, look, man, I know you're a Lexus seller. I know you're a dealership, right? You guys don't you guys have all you guys are all dealership men? Cool. Check this out. You want a fucking haircut? You want to be able to sell more cars? You need a good haircut because everyone's gonna look at you. Right now they're looking at you, they're trying to sign paperwork, but you have a bummy ass fucking haircut. I do not want to buy a car from no motherfucker who has a bummy ass haircut. Right. And that's it. You know what I'm saying? Guys respect guys who are doing well in life. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Men want to look up to men. That's why the Andrew Tates do so good because they had the women, because they had the cars. You know what I'm saying? But what did they do? They sacrificed. You have to learn how to sacrifice things. A lot of these barbers and a lot of these kids, the up and coming entrepreneurs, they don't want to sacrifice shit. They just want the bag now. Bro, you have to put, I, it took me seven years to learn how to do a haircut in 15 minutes. Mm. It took me seven years to learn how to get celebrity clients. It took me seven years of networking and networking and networking to be surrounded, to be able to cut celebrities. You know, now now that I'm probably one of the top barbers in the valley, and I say that shit very confidently. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Every time you see everyone, every time someone sees my name, or someone, some, every time someone sees me, you know what I'm saying, coming to a barber battle. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't even, like, sometimes I go to the bar battles, and I'm like, I don't know half the people here, but everyone they knows, know you. you know what I'm saying? But they know me. They're like, yo, that's well. You know what I'm saying? I mean, there's a lot that I can say yeah. about that, bro, but it's... Well, you definitely, when you walk in the room, you definitely have a presence about you, you know? No one is going to miss you. Yeah, <laughs> you I know mean, what I mean? No one, no, it, it's, and, and if they don't know who you are, they're going to ask somebody or go look you up. Mm -hmm. Like, who is this cat? You know what I mean? And then... And it's, it, that's, that's what I'm saying, yeah. man. You got to be able to be able to leave a legacy, and then... I left my market barbering. Now it's time for me to do something else. And I'm going to continue to do everything I can. You know, eventually I'm going to walk away from everything and just be proud of everything I've done. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It feels good. You know why? Like, you walk away and you're like, damn, like, I feel good about that. Yeah. That's how I'm going to walk away from life. Okay. When I leave this planet, I'm going to have more stories to tell. I'm going to have more <laughs> adventures. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to have more money. You know what I'm saying? Even when I die, I'm going to be worth more money. I'm going to be this excellent fucking guy. Every time someone talks about me, they're like, yo, he's crazy. He's wild as fuck, <laughs> but he's that fucking guy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. No matter what you say about me, you're going to have to put some respect on it. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Because I paved the way.
Right. And I've done it so young. That's why I get a lot of hate for, man. Yeah. I get a lot of hate because I did all this so fucking young and I'm still making shit happen. I'm barely starting. Yeah. That's what people don't understand. I'm barely starting. This shit just started. So what what would you say your what what's your circle like? You know, your your inner circle, those who you surround yourself with and and what is that like? Are you animals? They're fucking animals. Yeah. I surround myself with nothing but fucking dogs. You know what I'm saying? You're only as strong as your weakest link, and we don't have a weak link. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And that's 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 all. Can, that's why I tell guys: surround yourself. You want to learn how to be a millionaire? Kick it with millionaires. Mm-hmm. You want to learn how to be a crackhead? Go fucking kick it with crackheads. Right. You know what I'm saying? You want to learn how to be a dope ass barber? Go surround yourself with dope ass barbers. It's right. fucking simple. Right. You know what I'm saying? You are you you are the some of your five the five people you kick it with. Right. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that's really it's it's really all this shit is crazy because this is all common sense shit, but people think it's so complex. Right. It's easy. You know what I'm saying? If you don't, if you're not where you want to be in life, it's no one else's fault but yours. There was this, um, this older guy who told me a good a good saying. He said, "What's that shit out there on the street?" I said, "Asphalt." He said, "God damn right, because it's your ass and it's your fault." Oh. <laughs> and and <laughs> and and I live by that shit every since. I'm like, man, if I fuck up, yeah, my my ass fault. You know what I'm saying? I was, my dumb ass did that. Yeah. You know, I mean, there's, I mean, I can talk for hours and hours about this shit, man. You know, I, I try to encourage people. You know, what I'm saying, I try to, I try to motivate the youth. You know, like right now, I have a 16 year old, uh, and he's like, he meant like he's like my mentee. You know, what I'm saying, mm-hmm. I'm teaching him everything. By the time when I step out the game, he's gonna be doper than me. Yeah, I watch the way he does designs. He's fucking better than me at designs already. Yeah, he's better than me. I can say that shit confidently. At 16, he's better than me. Yeah. And by the time he's fucking 17, he's going to be better than me. He's going to make more money than me. He's going to have more clients than me. He's going to have this. He's going to have that because I put him in the position. But the thing is, he has to put the fucking work in. I told him, like, look, bro, I'm not going to do everything for you. I'm not your daddy. Right. You know what I'm saying? I could be a father figure, but I'm not your daddy. Yeah. No, I never be or try to be your daddy. But I can be there to be that positive, you know what I'm saying, role model for you, bro. And it's all to you, man. You know what I'm saying? You can, you know what I'm saying? Life gave me lemonade and I fucking decided to make Kool-Aid with it. It was like, how the fuck that shit happened? I don't know. I don't know how that shit happened, but we made that shit happen. You know what I'm saying? But I mean, overall, my last message, bro, is going to be everything I've been through, everything you've been through, you've been through some shit, you've been through some dark times, get the fuck over. Stop being a bitch. That's really it, man. Stop being a fucking bitch, man. That's that's how I tell people. You went through some shit? Cool. There's people going through shit right now, bro. Yeah. There's people getting murdered right now. You know what I'm saying? There's people getting graped right now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And you are lucky enough to be able to, you know what I'm saying, buy pizza. You know what I'm saying? You're lucky enough to be able to be, your worries are only like, damn, we have high gas prices. That's your only worry? Yo, there's people worried that they're going to get fucking bombed right now. You know what I'm saying? Right. And you're fucking, you miss, you're having, a, you have an opportunity to make your dream a reality, but you're fucking fumbling it. Mm. You know mm. what I'm saying? Mm. You got this opportunity right here. It's right in front of your face. Mm. And you tapping out. But I mean, that's that's all I got, man. That's Guilty. <laughs> that's all I got, man. You know what I'm saying? It's just, it's just, it's just, if you want something, go out and fucking get it, man. You right. know what I'm saying? But uh, if you guys want to follow me on Instagram, it's Wealth of Barber. Music video dropping soon. Nursery rhymes coming soon. Um, yeah, I don't know what else, man. I, was, I could talk forever, man. You got me. I'm fired up now. I'm about to do another podcast. Man, shit. <laughs> Just turn the camera on. <laughs> man, well, we certainly appreciate you coming out and uh, spending time with us. And, uh, man, just... Uh, I yeah, appreciate but, you having me, man. Yeah, I'll but, have more tattoos next time. You see okay, me. all right. I'll and so, tattoos. you know, the, the, the great lesson for this is, is, man, you cannot judge a book by its cover. Man. Man. You have a wealth of knowledge. I, I, I mean, that's the, that's the tip of the iceberg, man. I just, right. You know what I'm saying? Any other game you guys want from me, y'all got to, you know what I'm saying? Everyone else is going to pay, pay for that. Me. Everyone got to pay, man. I need some money, man. <laughs> I don't speak for free, man. Man, it was good. It was good yeah. being on, man. I feel good. I feel yep. good. Well, well, we're going to wrap it up here, and we thank you all for tuning in to this episode of the Barber Block Podcast, where we got, man, for real, a real barber. <laughs> just a real person, <laughs> yeah. right, that's been through some stuff. Um uh, you know, we had real talk. Hopefully you've been inspired, uh, you know, hearing his story and, 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 and not complaining about where you are because it could be worse. Right. So it could be worse. So just keep pushing forward and we'll see you on the next episode. Peace. Peace.